Cuttlefish. 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 Camouflage body patterns in cephalopods have to date been studied mostly in the daytime, partly because of the human diurnal lifestyle, but also because of the extra challenge of recording behavioral data under low light conditions. Cephalopods show a variety of nocturnal and diurnal behavior, therefore you might expect their camouflage body patterns to be fine-tuned and changeable even at night. In fact, dolphins prefer to forage in dim light conditions. In this study, they address two questions. Do cuttlefish continue to camouflage as natural light levels change during the transition from daytime to nighttime? And in very dim light, is this camouflage behavior adaptable? Meaning, can the animal actively analyze visual information from its surroundings to choose an appropriate camouflage body pattern? In cuttlefish, camouflage body patterns have been grouped into patterns that function by background matching, uniform, mottled, and disruptive coloration. Uniform patterns can be evoked on substrates such as a gray background with little or no contrast. Modeled patterns are shown on small black and white checkerboards or substrates with small particles. Disruptive patterns are evoked on large black and white checkerboards or natural rock. 22 cuttlefish were tested on artificial substrates known to evoke the three major body patterns, solid gray for uniform, small checkerboard for mottled, and large checkerboard for disruptive. Photography was assisted by a night mode using a flash that did not disturb the animals. In experiment 1, 16 images and light measurements were taken each night. One substrate was tested per night for a total of three experimental nights. Experiment 2 used a dark room under controlled light conditions. Filters were added to artificial light over time, decreasing the light intensity until the lowest intensity where the substrate and arena wall were changed to present visual cues known to stimulate a different body pattern. Granularity statistics were used to analyze the images taken from both experiment 1 and 2. The statistics from experiment 2 were converted into mean granularity to test for variation in the body patterns. The distributions of mean granularity statistics were tested for sphericity using Mockley's test of sphericity and compared using a series of ANOVAS tests. When placed on the gray substrate, there was a significant change in the body pattern of the cuttlefish at every light intensity, which correlated with the expected uniform body pattern. Ugh. A strong correlation was also found for the small check substrate. Ugh. For cuttlefish placed on the large check substrate, some variation was seen in the body pattern, which changed with light intensity. For example, during the darkest time periods, modeled regions along the side of the mantle were seen in many cuttlefish. However, many disruptive components were seen in all the cuttlefish and therefore, there was no significant difference between the expected disruptive pattern and the pattern observed. For experiment 2, animals were presented with one substrate that was changed to another in order to test for adaptation. When the substrate was changed from gray to large check, the body pattern significantly changed from uniform to disruptive in all lighting conditions. This was also found when changing from small check to large check, and large check to gray, and large check to small check. However, when going from gray to small check and small check to gray, there is no significant difference in the change of body pattern. Here we present the very first evidence that cuttlefish continue to camouflage themselves at night, and this behavior is adaptive. Consider the following. It is likely that cuttlefish would save energy by not expressing camouflage body patterns if it were not necessary. Therefore, they would only use it for two reasons. One, to avoid predators with keen night vision. And number two, to increase their own hunting success at night. This opens the possibility that color vision under low light conditions might not be as unusual as previously thought. Recall in our results that there was little change from gray to small check and from small check to gray. This may be due to the decreased level of contrast compared to the large check. The low amount of photons at such low light levels could affect the cuttlefish's ability to take in the fine details. However, just because a cuttlefish doesn't respond to a particular visual cue with a body pattern does not mean that it cannot recognize that particular visual cue. Our data suggests that nocturnal and deep sea cephalopods that dwell on very little light use their adaptive body patterns to avoid predators and to increase their hunting success. Yeah.